Hey guys, it's Matthew here once again, and for today's character, I have taken it upon myself to try and make Venom Gyre kind of a playable skill. Uh, if you tuned into, let's say, the first character of the league, and you tried out your own stuff uh, early on, you'd probably have noticed that Venom Gyre doesn't really hold up to Cobra Lash, at least not quite as nicely, for the poison side of things. So if you're building strictly around poison, uh, by the end of the character, Cobra Lash just felt a lot nicer and it just had a lot more potential, at least that's how it felt to me and that's how it seemed overall. But you can technically go with these poison skills, similar to Scourge Arrow, into pure elemental damage instead. So instead of focusing on physical chaos, uh, fizz to chaos conversion and then poison stuff, you can just stack lots and lots of flat elemental damage and that's what I've tried to do with this character here, which is an Inquisitor. Uh, hand of Wisdom and Action int stacking character. So Hand of Wisdom and Action gives a lot of lightning damage per 10 int. You stack up a lot of int, and in this case I've got about 1200. That gets you a lot of flat lightning damage, and then I've got a little bit of flat um, cold and fire as well. And you've got yourself Venom Gyre that deals pure elemental damage, and I've been trying to kind of figure out the best way to use it, the best way to do it. And ultimately, it seems to me like you should probably just go with a Dying Sun, not use GMP, and have a single instance of Fork. At the start of the video, I was using GMP, I wasn't using um, Dying Sun, and I'd occasionally do some Fork action. At this stage, I think it's probably best to have just um, three projectiles total through Dying Sun usage and fork in place for pretty much the entirety of the skills um, existence because uh, it does help clear quite a bit and still gives you a little bit of damage as opposed to cutting a lot of your damage and then you can see here that i've also tried to compare it a bit with spectral throw spectral throw is very reliable and it's pretty similar in what it feels like and achieves to venom gyre but at the moment feels just slightly slower than my venom gyre setup to me anyway and i'm trying to make sure that a, a new skill gets some play rather than just going pure spectral throw again so using this setup where you're essentially still using a single target setup rather than using both gmp and fork you can see that the single target is actually still pretty damn solid that red beast there just exploded instantly if you're using a lot of um uh, aoe setup like gmp fork the uh, single target does seem to like stutter a bit on the tougher enemies and Venom Gyre only really just clears AoE very well in that type of setup. Whereas this seems to have a pretty respectable AoE clear as well as a pretty respectable on-demand single target. And you can kind of sometimes see the mechanic of the actual skill itself um, going to work where you stack up some blades and then whirling blades and unleash a lot of blades. It's kind of more of an afterthought, at least in my opinion anyway. Uh, not really the sales factor of the uh, skill itself. So in that case, the skill ends up feeling kind of like frost blades and uh, it's pretty effective and it's kind of fun and it's a nice little playstyle. But it does have that uh, little whirling blade burst that should help every now and again when you stack things up. But ultimately on single target, I'm not sure it's worth ever actually whirling blading. It's just worth it if you're kind of traveling along from pack to pack still, getting a bit of extra burst, sometimes skipping attacks on a pack. Whereas on single target, from what it feels like, you should just stand there and keep attacking and basically never stop because that whirling blades is probably just a DPS loss, even with the helmet chart, which I'll show you in a second. But you can see that it's a pretty solid character in the end, um, as I would have expected an Inquisitor int stacking uh, Hand of Wisdom and Action build to be. That's basically why I wanted to make it with Venom Jar uh, to give it the best possible uh, opportunity to not suck. And, well, I think we've kind of got there in the end. And the damage does seem to be very good. Uh, I've compared it to previous Spectral Throw characters and it's probably got more damage than any of the other Spectral Throw characters I've played before, for single target anyway, and it's using quite a few uh, nifty little uh, new tools like Inspiration, Energy Leech, you've got your entire Inquisitor Ascendancy giving you plenty of um, utility and viability in the form of um, immunity to ailments, uh, plenty of regen from your um, energy shield, and overall it's actually a pretty tanky and well-made character, I think. 
uh, rather well-rounded in what it achieves. Uh, it's got a fairly solid amount of energy shield, fairly solid amount of regen and all that sort of garbage, and it's pretty damn hard to die on. And then it's actually rather fast to map with and has some okay single target. At least for now, it's not quite fully fine-tuned, but it should be able to do everything that it set out, sets out to do. And you can, of course, jump into plenty of other skills if you'd rather do them instead. You got your wild strikes, you got your spectral throws, your cobra lashes, your frost blades. Uh, it's a pretty versatile type of way of building, just the old int stack and then, well, picking up a bunch of crit nodes, not too many projectile specific or anything like that. So it's fairly flexible in what you do after that. It's simply a lot of crafting of gear. So I want to show you guys how I've built the character so far and what we're dealing with. Character here is uh, currently level 89 Inquisitor called Five Neck, Five Head, Long Neck, Five Neck, etc. Uh, because we are stacking lots of int, currently at 1221. I did hit 1300 and I do think something like 14, 1500 is probably the optimal and uh, kind of best in slot, but it's gonna take uh, quite a bit more crafting and uh, reworking of the tree to maybe get that amount. 1200 uh, or even 1000 plus or getting some decent stats uh, is pretty much what you're aiming for if you're gonna go int stacking, hand of wisdom and action. And what we're building around here is this claw. Uh, it's the upgraded version of Hand of Thought and Motion, I believe. And uh, you're going for 12% int rolls at the very least. And then you get two of them uh, simply just for the dual bonus. Uh, not really because um, you get you know double the benefit. That is how it used to work, but not anymore. Uh, and you still get another 12% int. So it seems to be pretty worth it because we can still maintain quite a large energy shield pool, though you could obviously go with a shield uh, instead and build a bit more defensively if you'd rather. But the idea is just get a lot of flat elemental damage, flat lightning, and uh, that's what our Venom Giant currently looks like. About 2k to 18k lightning, a little bit of cold, a little bit of chaos because of the uh, skill itself. Had some built-in chaos, but we're not really scaling it much. So it basically isn't even there as far as we're concerned. And the way it works is, yep, you throw out your Venom Gyres, some of it returns to you, you stack some up, and every time you uh, whirl, you will unleash a few of those. And if you've got Fork attached, you're gonna be uh, getting extra Venom Gyres going out, coming back, and then also while whirling, getting extras to come back to you as well, or um, to spray out rather. So when you have your Dying Sun up, you've got three projectiles going off. You've got a lot of attack speed because we do stack quite a bit in this build. And then you just unleash a few. And the Helm Enchant that I do have here is just 35% chance to keep the Corp projectiles fired by using Whirling Blades. So that means that you'll um, be able to whirl an extra one or two times with some of those blades. And ultimately, doesn't really feel like it's doing much. I don't think it's that worth going for. So if it costs any money, fuck it, don't go for it. Um, get something a little bit more useful like uh, aura reservation reduction or maybe golem buff effect some shit like that so these types of characters are always extremely heavy on the crafting side of things because if you're going to try and buy any int stacking or strength stacking deck stacking gear chances are it's very expensive or not even available at all so this character has played let's have a look 22 hours Probably about eight of those hours I've been sitting in town crafting and it's a lot of fun and a lot of the time profitable as well. I think I've made just about all of my gear except for maybe the rings um, and then ultimately I've probably made money on top of that through selling other things that I've made. But you're looking for stuff like this, a chest with percent int onto it. Uh, it's a shaper chest. And then if you can get the flat ES roll, that's cool. But otherwise you can multi-mod around just the um, percent int as it is. And you should have something like a 600 ES uh, high int chest right off the bat. Try and use lots of dense fossils on some other things. Um, like your hubris circlet this is like one dense fossil got a pretty decent roll there uh, because they're not very expensive at the moment the dense fossils so it's definitely uh, something you can look into for mass spamming uh, as far as my belt is concerned i think i just kind of chaos spammed dense fossil frigid you can do all kinds of stuff with that but it's a elder crystal belt um, just to get the 12% attributes and then whatever else you can get on top of it is pretty good too. Ultimately, should be better than a Cyclopean Coil if you can get a few extra little stats for the ES side of things. 
Uh, and then everything else is just a bit of int and uh, some fine-tuned resists and all of that. Um, a lot of resists come from my rings, but make sure you're getting int there as well. And then I did a lot of crafting on amulets. I made very, three very, very similar amulets in the end. Uh, this one ended up being my best one, which has the increased damage per 15 int roll, but you're ideally looking for the percent 12% uh, 12 attributes, some attributes on top of that. And uh, a couple of the ones I did end up making look something like um, this one, just 12 attributes, bunch of other attributes. And uh, this is a good 100 more int than my current amulet. But this one has um, something like 5 to 10% more DPS because of that other roll. So ideally, you're just going for kind of um, alt regaling, lots and lots of alterationing, lots and lots of regaling till you get the right mods. And then you can even just multi mod or just leave the main important mods like percent, int uh, percent attributes and then a few other little rolls if you can just from crafting uh, on the bench. But uh, they're pretty easy to roll, honestly. If you're going to go for the best in slot one and the best possible one, it's going to take a while. But just some basic uh, int rolls shouldn't take too much, especially when alterations are currently this cheap. So that's the gear covered. Um, as I mentioned, with Venom Jai, I did play around with um, GMP, played around with Fork, played around with Chain, uh, Pierce, all kinds of stuff. To me, in the end, uh, the most bang for buck value for your money uh, sort of Venom Gyre playstyle is Venom Gyre with just a bunch of damage supports. So you've got your Ellie damage, your energy leech, your inspiration, and your crit strikes. And then the only utility is Fork and comboed with your Dying Sun. You're still shooting out a lot of projectiles and then uh, forking a lot of them as well. And no GMP. Uh, if you want, you can by all means fit in GMP. It's going to be very hard to get the colors onto a VAR Regalia because I'd probably ditch crit strikes for that purpose. Um, but you can do it with Verici White Sockets. You can do it with the bench before you six link. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't want to drop any of these other things like Ellie Damage, uh, Inspiration, Energy Leech. All of that's pretty important. And then you really want at least one other green. I think uh, the real X factor here is crit strikes. Can get plenty of other things, but I think this is the way to go. And then on top of that fork, I do have one additional chance to pierce from um, these glove or this glove craft. It's a prefix. You can put it on gloves or helm. And I think it's pretty worth just to have at least one additional pierce. Otherwise, you could uh, anoint something like this guy here for two pierce, or you could spec into it if you're um, so inclined or have a build that's going down this way otherwise. Um, the passive tree, I don't know, ends up being kind of wonky all over the place. You are grabbing um, plenty of accuracy, dex, int nodes, plenty of uh, jewel sockets that end up giving you int. Uh, you have a tempered flesh over here that's actually worth about 56 crit multi to us since we don't take any of this strength garbage. So it's a pretty strong uh, point for tempered flesh. Do try and spec into spiritual aid so that uh, we get a bit of extra damage and attack speed that we otherwise probably wouldn't be able to get. Uh, Zealot's Oath gives us a lot of regen from um, the Inquisitor Ascendancy and then uh, other regen nodes and the like. Uh, we do have two golems in this build. Uh, they're pretty reliable to stay up and it's probably worth doing, I think. And then plenty of traveling for Int and of course getting Ghost Reaver for the leech and then ultimately CI to become uh, immune to chaos and plenty of damage. So I do currently have two golems, four linked so that they stay alive. You got minion life, meat shield, summon golem, summon other golem. And uh, the way it looks is currently something like this. So you have two golems running around. They basically never die. It's very rare that they do at the moment anyway. So it's pretty worth having two for those buffs for the crit accuracy and attack speed. And then besides that, the only other button to press uh, is Ancestral um, Protector at the moment. Though I probably will slot in a nice little uh, Vile skill. Something like a Vile Haste, possibly a Vile Double Strike. Something that just helps with a single target. And then of course you can also have a Vile Discipline. But I rarely will ever be pressing that button, so I can't be bothered putting it in. Uh, but then also completely foregone an assassin markering because I am using both of these heralds, which is very competitive to a wrath. So I'd rather use the herald effects. So we have herald, uh, curse on hit, herald, and assassin's mark. Assassin's mark should be up almost all the time on most targets. Very rarely will it not be up. I could only think of a couple of scenarios out there 
that you're not going to get it up um, with these supports the way they are so it's pretty worth doing considering a good assassin mark ring as an int stacker is going to be very hard to get um, besides that you just got your uh, whirling blades attached to faster attacks and fortifiers always but i've slapped on night blade as well and for the most part night blade is up almost all of the time or at least elusive is up all of the time and uh, that is a bit of extra defense and utility uh, the only other thing I should mention, I went through and got Pious Path first. It's a lot of quality of life. And then down to Inevitable Judgment. It's a little bit of a rough leveling uh, start unless you've got a lot of leveling gear and the Hand of Wisdom and uh, Hand of Thoughtful Motion, some shit like that. The claws before this one. Um, that helps a lot in your leveling process, but it might be a bit tough because before you transition to CI, it is a little difficult. And then lastly, I will say it's kind of hard to get your resist capped. So uh, a lot of my jewels do have a bit of resist on them. This one, for example, um, this one's got a bit as well. And not that. I think it's just the two, three. Yeah, just the two. So I do have a couple of resists here or there. Uh, it's not super important because you can get it through the gear, but if you're really trying to min-max, it's going to be hard to find a lot of your resists um, on your normal gear. The rings are going to do a lot of heavy lifting, and I'd highly recommend getting a bunch of resists on those. Otherwise, the less resists you have everywhere else, the more damage you can get uh, ultimately. So with all of that said, I think it ends up being a pretty strong character and a fairly fun playstyle. You can use just about anything you want for this sort of skill and playstyle building around the Hand of Wisdom in action. Uh, if you're going to try and go really balls deep into a character like this, it's probably worth having about 5 to 10x in currency to uh, buy or roll your own gear, because uh, they really do pay off a lot with stacking lots of int and getting good int gear while you're doing it. But uh, it's not terribly hard to get the character rolling with that sort of currency and uh, feeling worth doing at the very least as an Inquisitor, being crit, and Hand of Wisdom in action. Uh, do end up hitting like 600 crit multi, so crit is definitely a very viable option. Don't have to go non-crit in these types of builds, but uh, this is just one version of Hand of Wisdom in action, and trying to make Venom Jaya work. We'll uh, see how it goes in the end game once I get to it. So far, so good. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and see you next time.